Hey guys, Jeff Cheesehead Flipper here. So, today I'm going to start building my new photo area. If you saw my last video, if not, I'm going to put a little thing up here for you. I've kind of got my new area basically set up. Not completely, but it's pretty much getting there. One of the things I didn't have was a photo area, which is going to go directly over here. Now, I'm going to have someone helping me build this today. And I don't know if they're going to be comfortable with me filming while we are building it or not. If they are, then maybe we'll have some video of it. If not, I'll definitely, when we're done, I'll kind of walk you through the steps of what we did and show you, you know, the finished product and everything like that. And hopefully give you enough detail or maybe you can use that as like an idea of how to build your own. So what we're pretty much going to do is we're going to build about a waist high table. And then I'm going to put up some of these large boards that I, I got. Just, you know, basically at Menards, they have two ends, this side and a plain white side. Now, honestly, I think this side looks better in the photos. However, eBay's algorithm and Google Shopping prefer the white side, so we're going to go with the white. There's some, there is some debate online if you really need to go with that white background or if you can use something else. But eBay keeps hounding us that the white background is really what their algorithm likes and needs, so I'm going with the white. So, it is what it is. Yeah, I know. The other side looks much better to me, but what do I know? So, anyways, I'm going to jump out here for a little bit and come back and we'll see how we're doing. Alright, so behind me, you can probably see we are pretty much done with my photo area. It turned out really nice. I'm really liking it. I did have some, someone helping me with it, and they, I asked if they want to be okay with me filming some segments, and, well, they said yes, but in a way that you kind of knew that they weren't really comfortable with it, so I decided just not to do any of that. I did take a still, few still photos, which I'll spread out throughout this video here where they're appropriate, but, I mean, I'm really going to like this. So I'm going to show you guys kind of what we did so maybe if you want to build your own maybe this will give you some ideas or inspiration on how you can make your own permanent photo station let's start with some of the tools you're going to need all right so one of the tools you're going to need is some type of a saw now if you have a table saw that is definitely going to be preferred because you're going to get just it's so much easier but not everyone has on those or wants to show out the money on that for a project like this so I actually have a couple circular saws, but I can't find them because I just moved. So I just bought an El Cheapo. Just a little tool shop, you know, a little circular saw. It worked great for a little project like this. Now I have no idea if this thing is going to last, you know, forever or not, but for the needs of building something like this, it works just fine. Another tool that you're going to need is a drill. You could do this all hand tightening, but I highly don't recommend it. You're your hand is just gonna hurt by the end of it. Here's a lot to do, and you probably not you're not gonna be happy with that. And you're also gonna need, of course, a box of screws. We went with construction screws number nine, and we got the ones that have the star head on them. I like that over a regular Phillips or standard because when you end up with one of those stars, the good thing is. It's really hard for that to torque out or to slip out when you're doing it so you don't strip screws nearly as often with a star drive. So that's why we went with that for most things. A few other miscellaneous tools you'll need will include a basic tape measure. You don't need anything long. You really don't need anything more than a 10 foot tape measure because the longest board in this is seven feet tall. And some type of marking device like a pencil, which I guarantee you will spend more time looking for where you put that darn pencil than anything else in this project. All right, and by far the most critical and important tool that you are going to have in this entire thing, I can't stress this enough, you cannot do this project without this tool, is your cheese head. All right, now for a materials list. Some things you're going to need. You need a 48 by 48 uh, baseboard and a 48 by 24 baseboard. Now, it is recommended you get these in white. You can do a different color if you want. That's up to you, but both Google, eBay, they all say that 
the algorithms like white background, so I go with a white background. You do you, I'm doing white. The other thing you're going to need is eight 2x4s of about 8 feet in length. I know lumber prices are a little bit crazy right now, but if you just get an 8, it's not going to hurt you that bad. But make sure that they're good quality boards, they're straight, and are, include all of the pieces. You only want to get one that has like a good old chunk out of it, or when you look at it, it's like, wah. That's just going to screw everything up. Depends on the available lumber in your area. That may mean you have to sit there and dig through a pile for quite some time. Now, we were pretty lucky that we were able to get eight boards with going through only about 20 boards. It was getting down to the middle. The stack was about halfway gone, so there was still some decent ones there, but it wasn't totally picked over. If your place is totally picked over, just go somewhere else and get some quality boards. It'll make your life so much easier. All right, so now we can kind of show you about how we did this. Now, you can modify these lengths and distances for everything you like, because I wanted a fairly high table. I mean, this is more than waist high. This is above my belly button even. So it's a pretty high table, but I like that because I have a bad lower back. I don't want to bend over at all. But this backboard going up on the back, that's seven, seven, foot, seven foot board. Now you could do eight, but these are eight foot ceilings. I didn't want them to sit right at the top. So we did seven to kind of give us a little bit of space. Right, and then this sideboard here, I'm gonna give you some measurements on this one. This guy here is Yeah, actually right at 20. This guy here is 23 and a half along the side here. We did a little brace. Let's kind of fit that to whatever size you end up doing. But he is about a 15 inch brace. Now we also have so down here, we did another brace. This guy here is. About 23 and a half. Going there. Now the one coming across the back here, he is about 43 and a half. The back piece. Now that will be a little bit different than the guys up here. Except for the front piece. Alright, so here is a view of the underside of the table. Get a length of those guys for you. So these guys here, two inside ones, come up to 43 and a half inches from the far left to here. So this guy here is a little bit longer than the front board, which our original plans had this actually inside the same length as those other two underneath. But we thought it looked better actually out front here. Next one's in it, 40, about 46 and a half. Just a smidge over. Put that one across the front. We just thought it looked better there. And we also originally had the bottom part here closed off. So we had another board going across here. But I kind of like it better with it open like that because I can then use that for better storage I'm thinking I might do some type of a bubble wrap station under there. So stick around for that if you want to see that. Okay, so this front leg beam here goes up all the way down to the floor. You don't really need to see the floor. It's at 42 inches in height. Alright, now the baseboards I am currently using are from my old setup. I'll put a link up here somewhere, popping up right about now, of my old photo booth at my last location. So there I already are a couple of hole drills, holes drilled in there from when I installed it the last time, but you don't really line up with this one. I could have gotten a new piece, but I really think if I just put some putty over there and just touch, touch those with a little bit of flat white paint, you're not going to notice them in any photo. And if you do, it'd be so minuscule, no one's going to really care. Same with like these screws here that we use to attach this board, because this is quite a bit thinner. So we didn't use those screws I showed you in the beginning. We just used a couple of small screws we had laying around. I'm gonna touch those up with just a little bit of flat white paint. 
and that should hide those pretty good. Just like I'm gonna, in the middle, I'm gonna put another nail coming out right in the middle. And that will be to where I can hang any like hangers or mannequins I want. So I can also do hanging. That's why this is so, the backing of this is so tall. Is so I can do like clothing hanging or items that are hanging. But most of my items are gonna be done down in this area, which is why I wanted it so tall. Right, and to screw on the tabletop, all I did was two bolts, the uh, two screws, just in the front, both sides, left and right. And these little guys probably won't ever be seen, but just so I make sure they're not, um, again, I'm gonna hit these with just a little bit of flat white paint. And they should virtually disappear in any photo. photo. Yeah, when you do that and you cover them, you standing here, you're gonna look at that and see it and you're gonna be like, man, that just stands out. But trust me, in your photos, you're never gonna see that. All right, now if you're liking, kinda liking this, but you're thinking to yourself, oh wow, that's really high. I mean, I'm not really a short dude. I'm not exactly a tall guy, about 5'11", maybe, maybe close to six feet tall if I have my boots on. <laughs> and, you know, it comes up quite decently. If you don't want to get that high, very simple solution. Just adjust the, the length of your, your legs here on the bottom. That's it. You want to make this four inches shorter? Just make this board four inches shorter. Of course, you get to make, you know, all four. That goes without saying, but I know some people would but not you watching. You're smart enough to figure that out. I can guarantee it. <laughs> so, uh, what are you guys thinking of this photo area? Do you have a photo dedicated photo area for you? I'll tell you. If you don't have a dedicated photo area, whatever you're using, if it's not like dedicated, always set up. It just, it really is slowing you down. Guarantee it. It just. I used to do this in my kitchen. I put up my lights, which I have my box lights actually up here because I still haven't put the lighting up in this room. So my photography lights are here. That's what I've been using to make this somewhat lit. I hope the lighting is decent. And I would set those up every single day and take them down every day. Set them up. I just use a trifold white board. I had two of them. If I'm doing something on this light flat in the ground, I yeah, crawl on the ground, take the photos, crawl back up. I'm getting older, my back's not that great. It just, it was, it wasn't very fun. I would set up the you know, one on the ground and another one like this on the behind it, and that's how I would do, you know, shoot straight back at things. I mean, it worked. Yeah. This is so much better. If you have the room, I highly recommend it. Whatever you do, it doesn't have to be something like this, but make a photo area that's always set up. It's just going to speed you up your listing phenomenally. You sit there with your camera and you're just gonna go through, do just a huge batch of photos. Then sit down on your computer. For me, it's just right there, right next to it. And boom, list it. It is, yeah. I can't even describe to you how much faster and more efficient it is when you have dedicated spaces set up. All right, so generally, I only wear the cheese head on days that the Packers play. But this is so cool and special, I made an exception today because, holy cripes, I'm really liking this. So, if you guys found this useful, give me a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, and come back for more. I'm always doing more stuff. So, you guys, keep on listing, keep on selling, and I'll see you later. Have a great day.